Osteoporosis is a disorder of bone metabolism. Too much breakdown, not enough building up. You've probably heard me talk about biomarkers in the past. Today, I'm going to talk about two biomarkers that can tell you exactly what's going on with your bone so you can stop worrying about what's happening between your DEXA scans. You want to get updates at shorter intervals, and I'm going to show you how. So the two markers that I'm going to talk about today are P1 and P and CTX. Now I've talked about these before, but if you haven't seen that video, P1 and P stands for intact in terminal propeptide of type one pro collagen. We'll just call it P1 and P. P1 and P is the bone building biomarker. In other words, it's what's happening in your osteoblasts. As your osteoblasts build bone, P1 and P will go up. So things that can increase building bone are going to be things like optimizing your sex hormones like testosterone and oxytocin, getting adequate protein, adequate nutrition overall, appropriate supplementation based off biomarkers preferably, and then also osteogenic stimulus like weight training and osteostrong. Drugs like Forteo and Temlos will also do this, but again, most people watching this are trying to do this without drugs. The other biomarker I wanna talk about today is CTX or C-telopeptide. So CTX is the bone breakdown biomarker. It is what goes up when your osteoclasts or the cells that break down bone break down more bone. So we want this one to go down, but we have to be careful here because we don't want it to be smashed like it is with pharmaceuticals. You have to have some osteoclast function in order to remove old bone to allow osteoblasts to build bone. I hope that makes sense. So the most powerful thing that we found that lowers osteoclast function, or as measured by CTX, is estrogen. And testosterone by measure of what it does to estrogen. But for the most part, it's done mostly by sex hormones. Now the drugs, the bisphosphonate class, as well as prolia, can also reduce CTX. But when you look at CTX with those drugs, it drops it through the floor, meaning that it squashes it all together. And that's why you have those complications of those drugs, which include atypical femur fracture from dense, brittle bones, and also osteonecrosis of the jaw because the bone simply can't heal. So our experience so far is that we can drive these things up and we can drive them down. And my initial thought with these biomarkers is that we would be able to hopefully drive P1 and P up really high and drive CTX down really far, uh, but not too far. What we found though is that yes, we can manipulate the biomarkers and the program is working based off of repeat imaging, DEXA, et cetera, but the biomarkers seem to sometimes, usually actually go up and down together. So that means that some people that are building bone are actually seeing an increase in CTX. And this can be frustrating, both for myself initially, but not now, I'll explain why, but definitely for patients because the expectation was we're gonna get CTX to go down. And now we know that there's something else going on. So before I dig into that, before I say that the, that the biomarkers are worthless, um, let me just take a moment to ask a favor. If you haven't already subscribed to the channel, please do so. The reason why I ask that is that the more people that subscribe, the more people looking for bone health solutions will come to this channel. YouTube will put this in front of them. If you haven't read the book yet, you can go ahead and read um, the free version of my book online um, and download the PDF version of that book. Uh, it is a great jumping off point for osteoporosis or if you're looking for a new uh, approach to osteoporosis that's different than the traditional approach, it's an easy, quick read and written intentionally that way. And lastly, if you haven't gone to our masterclass yet and you wanna hear me put all of this together in one place, the free masterclass is the way to do that. Links for all those things are in the description below. All right, so are the biomarkers worthless then? If they're going up and down and it doesn't make any sense, should we just stop measuring them? No. So they should go up and down together. And actually this does make sense. If you think about bone metabolism, like I said, osteoporosis is a defect of too much breakdown, not enough buildup, right? But if we're going to build up, we have to break down bone. We just need to do it in the right ratio. So this actually was shown to me in a study. I looked at a couple of studies for videos that I did in the past and they had paired the P1 and P and CTX in a ratio and I'd never seen that before. What was really interesting 
actually, is that looking at these studies, the um, amount of difference in that pairing was very small, and yet these studies were showing benefits in bone mineral density based off of the intervention they were trialing. So what's really interesting about these data is that when we look at the accumulation of the P1 and P over CTX ratio, the improvement over time, what we're seeing in our own patients is that most people are improving. And for those that aren't, this is a really good opportunity for us to look and say, okay, what's the impact of certain variables? Of all the things that we're recommending, which ones are they participating in or not participating in? Have they been able to make the changes that we need to from a dietary perspective? How well have they been able to include all the recommendations into their life? Because it's hard to change lifestyle. It's hard to change diet. And so um, this is actually what we're doing now. And I don't have the results of this, but again, I wanted to get this out there so people can start measuring these things on their own. I also want to reiterate too that we don't know how this is going to impact imaging studies in the long term over a bigger number of people. But the initial data show that those that are seeing improvements in their imaging studies are also seeing improvements in this P1 and P over CTX ratio. Now, when we look at the people that aren't compared to the people that are seeing these improvements at the six month mark, um, just looking at the data right now in front of me, what I can see is that some of the people that aren't improving are not necessarily doing as much as they could that we've recommended. I'm seeing more people that are on hormone replacement therapy are doing better, which makes sense. We're seeing people that if they're on bone drugs, especially if they've been on bisphosphonates, um, it's hard to make a shift in these numbers. And that's because the bone metabolism has just simply been squashed. And so we can do all the things that we want to do, but if we can't impact the bone metabolism, these numbers aren't going to change. So we are sort of waiting for the drugs to work their way out of the system so that we can continue to build bone, if that makes sense. The other thing that we're seeing in here is people that are loading their bones versus not, that osteogenic uh, stimulus, that impetus to build bone is part of what drives the P1 and P to go up. So we're seeing people that are doing all the right things and they're not loading their bones adequately, they're not gonna see the improvement. So the average uh, improvement in our program is almost 100% uh, improvement, not 100% of people, but 100% improvement. We see numbers from just a little bit negative, no big negatives, a couple of people that are just, you know, whatever, 20% down, uh, something like that. And we have a few of those people. We have people, again, most people are improving. We see numbers all the way up to 800%, which is uh, a little bit crazy, uh, but, that was somebody who had big big swings in their numbers, but a lot of people in the you know the hundreds of percent improvement. And again, this is uh, I think just a way to look at what's happening from a bone metabolism perspective that you can do on a more frequent basis. So the question is is what does that mean? Is that good? Well, like I said, the studies that we've looked at showed not nearly as much change in the ratio and improvement in BMD over time. So time will tell. We don't have enough data yet to say convincingly that consistently the increase in ratio will result in an increase in BMD. I think that's what we're gonna see, but I can't say that yet. I'm looking forward to having enough data to show that. Um, but what it does tell me is that we are getting the impact that we want, but it's different than what I was expecting. Does that make sense? So in other words, I used to want to see CTX drop and P1 and P go up, but that actually wouldn't be physiologic and that actually doesn't make sense. So really what we're gonna see is we're gonna see both CTX and P1 and P rise, and we're gonna see them both fall. The difference is we're gonna see them rise hopefully unevenly. In other words, P1 and P is gonna rise more than CTX and that's that optimal bone metabolism that you're looking for. So let's talk about how you do this yourself. So there are companies that can sell or that do sell uh, the bone biomarkers directly to the public. So you can order CTX and P1 and P on your own. And we teach people how to do this through their through our uh, self-directed program. But a company like Life Extension, LabCorp and Quest occasionally do have it, but not always. You can buy these things, get a lab draw, and then you have your results yourself. So again, you're looking for P1 and P in CTX. And they're listed like that in the Life Extension uh, website. So once you have your results, you'll notice that CTX is listed in the units picograms per mL. It's generally going to be a three-digit number. It's going to be in the hundreds, hopefully not in the thousands, but it's going to be in the hundreds. Um, and then um, P1 and P is listed in nanograms per mL. So we want to put them both in the same units. So when you do that, you basically take the CTX three-digit number and you divide it by a thousand. That's going to leave you with a zero point something, something, something number. That's the CTX you're going to use in the ratio. Your P1 and P is going to be a two or three digit number. Um, and that's essentially going to stay like that because it's already in the units you want. And then you're going to divide 
that two to three digit number by the point something something number and it's gonna give you a ratio. That ratio is gonna be what you wanna compare then to your next set of labs in the next three to six months. You're not going to be able to tell much about that ratio out of the gate because there are not enough studies to have enough data to demonstrate what that ratio means. I'm gonna have that data here probably in the next six months because we'll have, again, hundreds of people with these numbers. Uh, but for now, um, just to have that number and then you can compare it. And again, this is what we do in our self-directed program. When you get that repeat, you're gonna look for an increase in the ratio number. So let's say your number started at 120, goes to 150. That's gonna be the, the increase that you're looking for. And that way you know that what you're doing is helping. And if you go back to some of my earlier videos and you, we talk about that 4R method of improving bone and, and reversing osteoporosis, you have to remember that once you've recognized why you're losing bone and you've reversed those causes of bone loss, you need to retest. And this is that third R. You have to retest because I still hear so many stories and get so many comments on YouTube. And we love the YouTube comments, by the way. But uh, we get so many comments of people that are doing a thing and they've just they've chosen seemingly at random three or four supplements. And this is the diet I eat and I'm going to be good. I'm not using the drugs. And I always write them back and I say, well, but wait are you going to retest your labs and make sure that you're headed in the right direction? Because you might not know and you might not be because a lot of people, for a lot of people, it takes more than just a couple of supplements and hopefully a good diet, but most people could use some improvement. So my point here is that you can improve your bone health. You can measure your bone health improvement along the way. We need to really take control of this ourselves if we're going to do it ourselves and use all the data that we have available to us. So I would strongly encourage you to start collecting this data, start looking at this ratio and compare it over time. We don't really know yet how frequently you can compare it. What does it make sense? Does it make sense to do it every six months like we do? Is it every three months? Is it more frequent? It would get pretty expensive if you did that. But I think ultimately we can come to a consensus here. We're going to start with every six months and we're going to go from there. And um, I'd love to hear some stories about how this goes for you guys. So leave those in the comments. Um, we do love the comments, like I said. So any comments on any of the topics um, or ideas for topics, you're welcome to leave those as well. We've gotten some fantastic topics from people that are doing some amazing research on their own. So keep that coming for sure. If you want more opportunities to reach out to our team, um, of course, you can uh, talk to our team about uh, our programs and that link will be in the description below. But more importantly, we also have a new announced um, offering that I want to mention, which is called the HealthSpan Nation. The HealthSpan Nation is our attempt to try to bring as many people into one space as possible who have the same goals. This is a combination of our health optimization people and our bone health people. What you get by being a member of HealthSpan Nation is an opportunity to ask questions to me and a team member uh, or a team member. You're going to uh, get access to some live interviews. I'm going to start doing podcast interviews live uh, through the HealthSpan Nation. You would have the uh, opportunity to watch that live as well as ask questions to my guest. We've got some really exciting guests coming up. So if you're interested in HealthSpan Nation, um, go to drdouglucas.com. You can click on the link there and uh, that'll tell you more about it, all the things that are included in it. I'm super excited about it. It launches now at the end of November um, and uh, it should be up here soon and that's going to be a really great place to get to talk to other people that are going through uh, similar issues and have like-minded goals. So I appreciate all your time. Thank you so much for making it to the end of this video. I'll see you on the next one.